Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial. My last one about loom bands went down really well, so I'm going to do another one on how to make bunting. Yeah, so be inspired, get some ideas, or just leave them completely plain. There are so many different ways of doing this and using so many different things. I've chose to use bias binding, you can use ribbon, you could even crochet a little chain, but I'll show you how I made this one in hope that you'll be inspired. So the first thing you're going to need is a template. This is so that you can get, make sure they're all the same size. It's just a bit of cereal box that I've uh, doubled over and then just tie the tape together. And the next thing you obviously need is some fabric. So I've chosen different ones for every little bit, but uh, you can go the same or you know they can be plain or whatever you want to do. So once you've got them cut out, you want to make sure that you use your template to draw a triangle in pencil and make sure that is as neat as you can. And this will be your seam allowance. Make sure that you have two of every one bit that you need because you're going to end up sewing them together. So these are the kind of ones that I've been adding to my thing. These have got some strawberries there, so I am actually cross stitching to embellish them. I've added some beads there as well and then some extra yellow thread for pips and things. I've done a cupcake with a mouse. A flamingo in like long stitch, kind of Van Gogh style sunflower, some lavender, a tree, and uh, I'm not happy with these squirrels, but they're squirrels with apples, so teacup with a robin and a spoon. These are just some things that I really like, so I decided to make them all a little bit different. The last one I'm going to be doing today and talking through with you, doing a daisy and a vintage swallow. So I've got my little design here, you can find all these kind of things on Google. So all I've done to start this off is do a bit of long stitch with some white thread, create the daisy and then I've gone this way for the middle. Also the needle I'm using is one with a long eye so you can fit in your bigger threads. Also it's not as sharp as a normal needle so you don't prick yourself as much. I'm just doing this design straight onto my fabric here. You can use this where you'll do your design on top of your fabric like that, you'll cut it to size and then once you've done it you could just pull these bits out and they'll all come out and you'll be left with your design. I've done a few of these now so I'm kind of used to it, I'm just going to go for it and perfection isn't everything to me. If you are a beginner or a perfectionist then I do advise that you use some cross stitch fabric. And you'll notice I'm just I'm doing a lot of long stitches rather than simple cross stitch. On my strawberries I did a lot of cross stitch in here and then long stitch for the stalk so it depends really what your design is and uh, what you enjoy. So now I'm just going to add some detail with a black thread. So I've just got a small needle here and I'm just going to thread some simple black thread and just do a few little details like eyes and just bits that go around the wing. Right, so I've done my black outlining. I've also added a circle around this, the, uh, the daisy middle just to help it come out a little. So your next step is to sew these two bits together. You want to make sure you do it back to back. It's going to be like a little pocket and then you're going to pull it through again. So then you're going to need your template and uh, also you might want to take this opportunity to rub out these pencil lines if they're going to be seen. Once you've done that you can just double check that's going to be in the middle there. Great. So you can see just there that my needle is in the fabric so that means when I bring my foot up I can then twist this and it won't go anywhere. So now I've done my simple stitch there, you can just pull the tacking, obviously don't snag anything but it should come out quite easily, just like that, so you have your bits. Now you want to carefully trim off any excess with some sharp scissors, about that much is fine to leave that spare. On your tip then, you just want to go there because that means when we put it inside out it will have a nice point there. So this is the part where you turn your bit inside out. You can use all sorts of tools for this. I tend to use a crochet hook or a pencil or whatever you want to use. Make sure whatever you do isn't so sharp that it bursts through the end there. And you have your triangle. So again if you haven't rubbed off your lines do that now. Next step is to iron your design. So thread face down what you want to do. You can always use your fingers for this first. Is just press out the corners and give them, this is what I tend to do, you just get your nails right on there, all the tips of your fingers, and you just want to emphasise that with an iron. Mind your fingers. So now that we know that is nice and flat for us to work with, so do that to all of yours. Now that I've ironed all my bits out nice and straight, because I've used odd bits of fabric, some of mine are shorter than the other, so you obviously need to find your short. 
and then match those up with the rest of them. So you need to work out where you're going to join your bias binding. So this is bias binding. You can use ribbon uh, or bits of fabric if you want to be clever. What I'm going to do is attach it onto the, the fabric and then sew along the fold line on one side, fold it over and sew along the other. So I'll show you how to do that. This is bias binding. So now I've got my bias binding, I'm just pinning it to the very edge of the back. I'll just do one with you now. I've also just added a little line to my template to make sure they're all the same size. So there's my line joining this one up just after it. I'm just leaving enough space so that when we stitch along this inside line, we have enough space there and it won't fray or anything like that. So then I'm gonna get my pin, I'm gonna pin down the other side of the bias binding that we won't be stitching and we won't need to lift. I'm going to pin that on this side and then this side. I can still lift this bit and I can still sew along that line. Do that with your whole line. Here we are now, we're going to sew along this inside line. Don't forget we've got our pattern on the other side. So I'm just going to sew right the way from the back to the bottom. Once you reach the very end, just go back into your stitches and stitch right off there. And it should look a bit like that. Do the rest of them. Next, your project should look kind of messy like that. At this point, you can do lots of pinning and then obviously unpin as you get to it. You can iron your bias binding, but basically what we're gonna do now is fold that down and stitch along there all the way. I'm using a pink thread on my top and then gray for the bottom, so that means that pink will be on top of here, so you're able to see the stitches and gray on the back there like that. So it's up to you whatever you wanna do at that point. Do you need to do this bit very slowly? Um, take your time because it is nice to get this bit right. These are the stitches that you will be able to see. If you do want to have a bit left over, maybe a tassel or whatever, then you want to start there. But just to show you, I'm going to do this right here. So I'm just going to put my needle into my fabric, check it's in exactly the right spot that I want it to be in and get going. Now that I've done that, I will have a nice pretty line. All I've done to finish it off as well over here, I just carried on right and then folded it over. And then I'm just gonna put a few stitches in there to make it a nice neat finish. Thanks for watching this week guys. I hope you've uh, you've done all right with that. If you do enjoy these, let me know and I will bring out more for you and uh, try to help you if you have any questions or problems. I tend to be quite impatient so mine could be a lot neater but I just kind of want to get it done. So, you know, if you take the time then yours will be much better than mine. Nice rhyme there to end on. Thanks.